Hi everybody, this is Debbie with PedigreePups.com and today I want to share some information with you um, concerning one aspect of owning a dog or a puppy and its health and that's, uh, let's talk about distemper. First of all, you know, what is canine distemper? Did you know that canine distemper is also just really, really contagious? It's true. Now the canine distemper virus is highly contagious. It's also transmitted through the air as well as through various bodily secretions that might occur between you know, various dogs. Now most often distemper is spread as the dogs breathe or if they cough on each other, or also through discharge from their eyes or their nose, as well as you know other bodily secretions from infected animals. So if they come in contact also with urine or any kind of fecal matter from infected dogs, infection can also occur. Now this virus also affects many kinds of wild animals as well, such as hyenas, mink, weasels, raccoons, uh, civet cats, and even some of the large zoo cats. Uh, the canine distemper virus is very similar to the human measles virus. And this is also a respiratory disease in dogs, and a lot of times you may even hear it referred to as hard pad disease. Now most often the pets that uh, that die from this are usually older dogs or they're either very young dogs or excuse me young puppies and both of these one of the things they have in common is that they both have very weak or even underdeveloped immune systems. Now the canine distemper virus suppresses the pet's immune system and actually multiplies within the dog's system as it spreads throughout its body and it's just very hard for, for dogs to, to overcome. Now many dogs that have uh, distemper uh, may not become seriously ill, but of those dogs, you know, it's also true that a lot of the dogs that do get canine uh, distemper, of those dogs that do get it, about half of them will die. So what are the risks associated with canine distemper? Now don't be fooled, distemper is a really serious and a very highly contagious disease and it can, can you know, quickly spread through a kennel. Um, or between other dogs. Now a significant number of infected dogs may easily die from this disease so it's very very important that you you know be aware of this. Now all dogs that are susceptible, excuse me, all dogs are susceptible to this disease however the very young dogs and also the very old dogs have the highest death rate which may be even up to about 75 percent of the dogs that are infected with this that are young or either very very old. So even if a dog doesn't die from distemper, it may have uh, its health permanently impaired for the rest of its life. Now, patients that recover from distemper can have a lot of other permanent damage to their system such as problems with their vision or their nervous system. They can have behavioral changes. They might have seizures. They may walk in circles. Um, they may have a lot of other ambulatory problems which may commonly develop as well. And puppies also that recover from this can also have severely mottled teeth and this is due to the abnormalities of the developing enamel that occur as a result of this terrible disease in puppies. So what exactly are the symptoms of canine distemper? Now, canine distemper is, is kind of hard to diagnose because it has a lot of different possible symptoms that are also all very varied and uh, it makes it really hard so if you have any sick puppy you know immediately have it taken to a veterinarian for a diagnosis immediately because it's just really important to have this checked out before it's too late. So when puppies do recover, they may have, you know, like we said before, severe enamel damage to their teeth. Or they may have problems with their nose or their foot pads, uh, which may become thickened. And for this reason, prevention of uh, canine distemper is simply the best way of all to, de to deal with this terrible disease. Now the most kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, the most common symptoms of distemper to watch for are also symptoms of, you know, a lot of other diseases. So like I said, it's very hard to diagnose without go going to the veterinarian. So your dog may, or your puppy may have nasal or eye discharge, diarrhea, vomiting, fever, coughing, it may be depressed, loses appetite, it might have seizures, but it can also affect other symptoms in the body because uh, also the dogs may become listless or they might have just very, very poor appetites. So mildly affected dogs may cough and sometimes, you know, they may often be misdiagnosed so it's not uncommon for an infected dog to have a few but not all the symptoms that we just talked about earlier. 
So be aware, now this is really important, there is a latent period of time between the time the virus actually enters the dog's body until clinical symptoms actually appear or become apparent. And this virus can easily, excuse me, I'm sorry, and usually this latent period of time can last anywhere from like 10 to 14 days. And this virus can also be easily spread for several weeks during and after the illness is cleared up. So what's the best way to treat or to prevent canine distemper? <clears throat> Excuse me. And like we said before, prevention of any infection, I'm sorry, let's get the right slide. Prevention by any uh, means is by far and away the best way to deal with canine distemper. And the proper vaccination of all the puppies and in your dogs are just absolutely necessary. Typically, <clears throat> excuse me, typically it's best to begin vaccinations for this disease around six weeks of age and continue until the puppy's at least around 12 to 16 weeks of age, giving the vaccine about three to four week intervals during this time. Now the vaccine must also be repeated several times due to the interference of the antibodies that are passed on to the puppy through its mother's milk. Now the first distemper vaccination is given to those puppies who are susceptible at that particular time while all the follow-up vaccinations are given to help provide protection to all puppies who receive vaccination as well. So you just want to make sure, you know, vaccination is by far the best way to prevent this disease so make sure that your puppies and your dogs are properly vaccinated. So please don't let this happen to your dog because it's a terrible thing for them to have to, to deal with. So right now there's no one specific treatment for distemper. Some surviving dogs may develop immunities to protect them from distemper for the rest of their lives, but this isn't the case with young puppies. Now therapy for distemper is largely supportive, consisting of intravenous fluids, anti-seizure medications, and a lot of other medications, and it can be really, really expensive. So the safe, excuse me, the safest protection of all by far is by preventing it by giving your puppies and your dogs the proper vaccinations. Now excellent vaccinations or vaccines, excuse me, have been developed to help prevent canine distemper and these have minimal side effects for most dogs. Now let me reemphasize that many older dogs did not develop a lifelong immunity to distemper and for that reason these dogs should also be given vaccinations, you know, as needed. So, if you'd like to uh, learn more information about various dog health issues, uh, training issues, if you're looking to learn you know, more information about any of the particular AKC recognized dog breeds, please come by and check us out any time. And the website is www.pedigreepups.com. Thank you very much, and y'all have a good day.